I'll tell you what, me and you are done. I loved you and you've been lying to me from the start. You can fuck off. And I don't care how tasty you are, it's over. This week on Fat Matt, we're breaking up with bread. We'll be looking at how and why this one food product makes you pile on the pounds and how just one week without it can help you lose them. I'm Fat Matt, welcome to this week's episode. Here we are, episode two of Fat Matt, Fitness Struggles of a Middle-Aged Dad. Welcome back. So, what have I been up to? I've had a week without bread. Ah, no bread. Just been eating cakes and stuff like that. That was just for filming. I spat it out, promise. <laughs> How's it made me feel, not having this bread? Well, I feel great. I feel like I've got a bit more energy. I've got a little bit of a headache every now and again. But from what I've researched, that's a normal side effect. When you're starting to come off the bread and the wheat, you'll start to get a little bit of a headache. I have a lot more energy in the afternoon. If you have a sandwich for lunch and that raises your blood sugar, that afternoon nap that you need when you start to really get tired, that's just your body digesting that heavy food. So my energy levels are up and I've started doing a little bit of exercise. Not much. I'm not in any kind of shape at all but I've improved a little bit with that just a little bit 15 minutes every day and I feel much much better for it bread's been around for thousands of years and it hasn't really been a problem before why should we stop eating bread now when it's been a staple food for so long the wheat that we use today is very very different to what they used to use reacts in a very very different way inside the gut than what it would have done but also it's what we're having with the bread like a viking would probably have a big leg of venison or something like that full of protein uh, full of uh, nice animal fats very few carbohydrates so that was good and then he'd eat some bread and that was his carbs and that was the worst thing he'd eat all day but now we will have a burger with some bread a milkshake ice cream and a chockey bar to finish so our, our least bad thing is still the worst thing that a viking would have had we're going to go into the science of this a little bit. And in, in true Fat Matt style, we're going to gloss over this and put it in as layman terms as we possibly can. If you do want a bit more in-depth scientific talk about it, I'll put some links in the description. Go and check those out if you want to hear from someone in a white jacket. Uh, otherwise, just listen to me and I'll tell you the basics. Bread is basically just a big pot of sugar. Uh, when you eat it, it goes into the body and gets broken down and becomes mainly glucose. And glucose is sugar. Now, if the glucose just stayed in our body, even for just a day or two, it would probably kill us. It needs to get to the cells. Now, the glucose can't get into the cells by itself. We'll call the cells like a prison cell. And it needs the prison guard to open that door. The prison guard of our body is insulin. That opens the door to the cell and lets all the glucose in. And that is especially true for the fat cells. So you can't get fat without the presence of insulin. And your fat cells can't release fat and burn that energy if insulin is there. Now insulin has many jobs but it's most important is that prison guard. Its main job is to get that killer glucose off our bloodstream streets and into the cells. Now it's going to want to put it in the brain cells, the liver cells and the muscle cells first but as soon as they're full it's going to get rid of it any way it can and the easiest way to do that is to push it into the fat cells and the fat cells put up very little resistance. They'll do as they're told and they'll grow and they'll grow and they'll take in more and more and more of the sugar and they'll expand and expand and expand and the only way to stop that happening is to make sure that there's not too much glucose in the blood it's what they call a blood sugar spike and bread is a bastard for it the insulin is dedicated to its job and once it's put all that glucose away in the fat cells it's going to stick around for a little bit to make sure there's nothing else happening it doesn't just clock straight off so, for the next hour, two hours, you're going to have more insulin in your bloodstream than is normal. Now, the more insulin that you've got knocking around in your blood, 
then the more those cells get used to the insulin being there and they don't respond to it as they used to. So now the next time you eat, you need more insulin to go in and break this glucose down and get it into the cells. And that takes longer and longer and longer to come out of your system. So there's constantly more and more insulin in your bloodstream. And eventually, the cells just get fed up of it. That's called insulin resistance. Your glucose goes in and your muscles, they're like, well, yeah, we'll let a bit in but we're not letting any more than that in. So you need to eat more and more food to get more and more nutrients in to try and fill these cells. And the insulin starts working over and over and over and over. And there's more and more food going in. You get fatter and fatter and fatter. And then you break. And that's where diabetes kicks in and a whole host of other illnesses. And it all stems and goes back to those blood sugar spikes. The more you raise your blood sugar and the more often you raise your blood sugar spikes, the more and more resistance you're going to build up to that insulin. So we need to bring it down before it kills us. You know what really pisses me off about this? From the day I was born, I've been told that this is what you do. This is the way to eat healthily. And it's just plain wrong. Just look at this chart. This is a graph that shows the obesity rates in America since 1960. You can see 1960 to 1980, pretty steady. Just around the eight, just before 1980, we just start to see a little rise. And then it absolutely skyrockets all the way to the 2000s. What's gone on? Let's take another look at BMI records. All the way from the 1920s to the 1960s, you can see it's pretty level. But as soon as you hit the 80s, boom, it skyrockets. What happened? In 1943, they were telling you to eat a little bit of everything. Breads and cereals, milks, meats, fish. Good advice. In 1977, the US government did a study for the dietary goals for the United States. And they recommended that all Americans reduce their fat, saturated fat and cholesterol consumption and increase their carbohydrate consumption to 55 to 60 percent of their daily calories. So from 1980 to 1999, it continues to rise sharply. What was happening then? You might be familiar with the food pyramid. It originated in Sweden in 1972. It wasn't really anything to do with health at the time. Uh, Swedish food prices were very high and this was just a guide of how to get by on affordable food. It was more economic than health based. And it took a few years, but the rest of the world started to adopt this pyramid shape as a healthy eating guide. This one's from 1992. And you can see right at the bottom of this pyramid, the foundations, the thing that you base your healthy eating on is bread, pasta, rice, and cereals. All super, super glucose heavy carbohydrates. They're telling you to have six to 11 portions of this. Where's the science in this? Well, it turns out there was no science in this. The scientists who came up with this have actually gone on record saying they only recommended four to six servings. And when they put it to the politicians, it were the politicians who changed it. You've got to remember how powerful and how profitable this pyramid was going to be. This was going to be the foundation, the thing that was taught at schools, the thing that was advertised all over the world. This is what everybody was going to be eating. So if you got in on that ground floor, you were quids in. Milk and cereals has got its own little section there. In the original, that was just all lumped in together. But the dairy industry pressured politicians and they got their own section. It's criminal. In 2011, a Harvard independent study, free from the pressures of politics, came up with this. Fruits and veg, half of your daily intake. Grains, the carb stuff, breads, pastas, rice, they take up a quarter. Protein takes up another quarter. And then just on the side there, optional extras for the dairy. Here in the UK, the beloved NHS. And this is what they're telling you that you need to be eating. Fruit and veg are getting a nice big section of the pie. Not quite half, but it's a good chunk. But an equally sized portion on the other side is those high carbs. The breads, the potatoes, the pastas. They've even got bagels in there. And look at the dairy. Low fat cheese, low fat yogurt. My God, where are you getting this information from? It's no wonder there's an obesity epidemic when these people are telling you to eat this stuff 
even though we know it's completely wrong. Now I know what you're thinking, who's this fat bastard to tell me that these things are wrong? Well, look at me, I've been following these rules, this is what I've lived with for 45 years. These were the rules that we've followed, it's what I've been brought up and indoctrinated as a kid and it's only now when I start looking into it that I find out that it's all bullshit and I'm gutted. I'm so upset because I love bread. So what am I going to do without my bread? Well, I've had a little look at that as well and there's a thing called cloud bread. No idea what it's going to be like, but let's give it a go. How many songs can you write about heartbreak? How to go when you're fed up with mistakes? Maybe I just found the answers. Maybe I just found the answers in you. Come give me all your love. I want you to know. We can make it together, let the wind blow, all we need is each other, come take my hand, you're all that I have, now I won't let you go, cause I found all the answers in you, ooh, 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 ooh. So that was cloud bread. Took about 25 minutes to make. Was it worth the effort? It's not bad. It's all right. It's a little bit omelette It's like a crispy omelette. I think it was supposed to be a bit fluffier than that, but I opened the oven door halfway through, but it was okay. It'd be brilliant if you're desperate for like a bacon and egg sandwich or a burger. But to be honest, I haven't missed the bread all that much. Was it worth doing? Let's find out with the tail of the tape. Week one, half an inch off the neck, 70. Half an inch off the chest, 48.5. That flabby belly stays the same at 53.5. But a massive one inch off the waist at 49. And still looking fat, but that arse has lost one inch. That all important weight, we're down to 116.2. That's almost four kilograms, 18.3 stone. Wow, half a stone, that's not bad. I'm pretty happy with that. I've lost half an inch off the neck, half an inch off the chest, belly stayed the same, which is a shame. The waist is a full inch off that, and my fat arse has lost an inch as well. That's not bad at all. How have you done? If you're following along and going on my journey, let me know in the comments where you're up to. Did you lose any weight this week? Did you lose any inches? If you did, give us a big thumbs up on the video. If you didn't, give us a thumbs down. We like to know either way, but half a stone. And that's just from cutting out the glucose. Now, don't get me wrong. Glucose is really, really important. It feeds every cell in the body. It's essential to us. But there's another side to sugar that our body doesn't process so well, and that's fructose. Sweet, sugary, fizzy drinks are packed full of high fructose fructose corn syrup and that's what we're going to be eliminating this week so join me next week as we find out why sugary drinks are bad for you why fruit juice is bad for you and we'll find out what effects that has had on my body has my weight gone down have my inches gone down make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell to join me there that's it for this week i'm fat matt cheers boys see you later Woo!